This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Station is live on a Friday. This is how we do it, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, February 25th, wherever and however you have chosen to connect. Always great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who always is seeking some more screen time, Jerem Jordan. Last night I uh, was the stage manager for CBS Sports Network, and uh, I really asked them to do a four shot, but they only did a three shot of <laughs> talent. I thought I was part of that group. Apparently not. But, uh, yeah, I was on the edge trying to get out of the way, and uh, this is me on the far left. Yoink! Yep. Trying to stay out of the way of the, of the guys doing their thing. This isn't my show. That's their show. But this is our show, so we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll see about the four shot here, huh? This this is this no is no four our shots show. here. Just got three mics, you know. Yeah, <laughs> one day. More screen time forthcoming for you, like I, tonight. You know, great, whatever. Men's volleyball. I get paid the same whether it's a two shot or a three shot. Yeah, truth. <laughs> Here's your Friday show lineup: Caleb Loner on the rise. What has changed for Mr. Loner over the past few weeks? We'll talk with him. What are the chances BYU men's basketball gets the four seed at the West Coast Conference tournament? And another shot at San Francisco in Las Vegas. BYU women's basketball scores over the century mark again. Are the ladies sending a message to the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee? And more importantly, will it be heard about how they feel disrespected? Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Men's Hoops beats LMU by 20, 79-59 in the penultimate game of the regular season. Thanks to 14 from Tijon Lucas, second career double-double from Caleb Loner, who played like a man possessed in a good way. Seneca Knight did not play with thumb injury. TBD on whether he'll, uh, you know, return and, and win, if at all. Cougars host Pepperdine tomorrow night. Senior night, ESPNU, BYU Radio. Radio pregame, 7 Eastern time. That game's an hour earlier than normal. As we just mentioned, BYU women's basketball doing work. 103 points on the road against Santa Clara last night in a 37-point drubbing at the Levy Center. BYU shot 60% from the field, almost 50% from three, yet they remain a five seed in the latest bracketology from ESPN's Charlie Cream. They can clinch an outright WCC regular season title with a win at Pacific tomorrow at 5 Eastern. Number 12, Gymnastics competes at number 14, Utah State. How about that? Both the tough team. Cougars beat the Aggies January 28th in Pro. Let's go, ladies. Number 13, BYU men's volleyball take on number nine, Grand Canyon tonight and tomorrow, 9 Eastern in Provo. BYU leads the overall series against the Lopes, nine matches to two. But this time, the Cougars will enter home matches as a perceived underdog. A strange role. Watch live on BYU TV and the app, 9 p.m. Eastern. Jerem Jordan, Steve Vale on the call. Five-match losing streak for the Cougs. First time Grand Canyon's ever been the higher-ranked team in the world. Baseball beats Arizona State 4-2 thanks to a pair of runs in the ninth. Reed McLaughlin closed it out as well for his third save of the year. Game two is tonight, 8 Eastern and 3 Eastern tomorrow. You can listen on BYU Radio. The Pac-12 dominance continues. Yes, it does. We'll discuss that later. 24th ranked BYU softball splits a doubleheader in Cathedral City, California. First shutting out Bethune-Cookman 7-0 for Cougars' ninth straight win overall. Then having that win streak snapped in a 10-3 loss to number 17, Tennessee. BYU plays Cal Baptist today right now, as of four minutes ago. And Long Beach State tomorrow, also at noon Eastern. Track and Field hosts the final indoor meet of the season today and tomorrow before the NCAA Championships in a few weeks. Zach McWhorter is uh, number one in the pole vault in the country, and so is Courtney Wayman in the 5,000, which uh, they're getting ready to hopefully and perhaps win a national championship. Let's go. Men's tennis in Reno to face Nevada. Or is it Nevada, Jerem? There's no question. <laughs> We're not from New Jersey. Exactly. It's Nevada, like Colorado, too, people. Anyway, men's tennis, they'll face the Wolfpack and UC Davis tomorrow. The women take on Utah in Salt Lake City tonight at 7 Eastern. Let's send some karma to BYU women's tennis and head coach Hassler. Yeah, let's get it done. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. Taking care of business against LMU, Every as BYU day. should have done. BYU, they didn't have to play the mullet, 
uh, who is LMU's, I think, best player, who went for 26 points against BYU the last time they played. But the Cougars, they took advantage of an undermanned LMU team. They win by 20. So, Jerem, after sitting courtside, getting that screen time, do you feel I didn't like get the screen time? Do you feel like after last night, things now are feeling different for BYU as they approach the postseason? It certainly felt good to win by 20 and execute well, but LMU played seven dudes, eight with one dude with two minutes. So it's hard to know. Was that LMU? Was that? I mean, this wasn't the same LMU team as you mentioned. Kelly Lea Pepe wasn't in the game. So, but like BYU should pound this team. This is this is a home game. BYU played well. Yeah, awesome. Next. That's how I feel about it. Like, yes, BYU played well, did a good job. Uh, solid performances. Didn't need uh, Alex Barcelo to, to really do much. Had, what, nine points? Seven, but seven assists, seven rebounds, which is pretty cool. Now At that's one point, refreshing. he had a seven, seven, seven. That was, that was Vegas-like numbers. That's yeah, cool. I, I like that. Refreshing that Alex Barcelo did not need to have a huge game. I and hope not, right? BYU won by 20 at home. They yeah, won did, comfortably. If if Alex Barcelo needs to have a big game against LMU with like seven dudes, you got real problems. This BYU team has won 20 games. Not like BYU stinks. They've not been playing well, yes. But yeah, no, it's it's a 20 win team. Like this is this is a good BYU team. It's just whether they're gonna be good enough to make the tournament. Things feel a little bit different. Even though BYU lost to St. Mary's, they played a better basketball game overall than they had been playing yeah. during the four game losing streak. So, victory. so the yeah. setback, sure. yeah. yeah. And we hate to use that phrase. Do, do we? We just brought it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. BYU it's was not playing fun better. when you have to settle on that. But yeah. Losers talk about, you know, margin and but we played well. They know. found a way against LMU and Pepperdine on the road. They took care of business against LMU last night at home. I think they will do the same against Pepperdine. If and they don't, there's a real issue. Even with the loss to St. Mary's, BYU will go into Las Vegas having won four of five. And then that opens up an even broader topic because we're not sure how in the world things are going to play out tomorrow and where exactly BYU is going to be seated going into Las Vegas. Topic two, do you care what seed BYU gets in the tournament? Simply no. As long as... BYU gets to play San Francisco at some point. Sure, it would be great to be the four seed and guarantee yourself a spot in Saturday's quarterfinals, not having to worry about a Friday game. But I almost feel like BYU would benefit from playing an extra game and having an opportunity to just get used to the arena with fans again now in it for uh, the first time in a few years because of the whole COVID scenario. Are there fans on Thursday and Friday at all, period? <laughs> We've been there. There will be like BYU a, fans. I've been there since 2010. They rarely are, right? There, there will be a, a good contingent of BYU fans if the Cougars are playing on Friday night. So I'm almost okay with BYU being a, a projected favorite and having a chance to play. They get used to the setting, and then they go in and having played a game they get to face San Francisco on Saturday. Maybe San Francisco is a little rusty. I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm, it doesn't really matter to me. Four or five seed, just give me the opportunity to play San Francisco on Saturday. Also, how hard do you have to go on Friday, and how much juice do you have Saturday? Obviously, you're going to be up for the game. But, I mean, like the, the, the benefit of playing on the court is, yes, you've played on the court. You got used to it. Right now, but BYU also, would be you playing. you ran in a game and yeah. are a little more tired, right? BYU would be playing likely – LMU, the same team they faced last night. And right who now, knows if Lea Pepe is going to be back. Yeah. Or Pacific. Yeah, right now Pacific's at – it looks like it's going to be Pacific probably at the eight seed or whatever, right? But, yeah, I don't care what seed BYU is because they're not going to be the three, which is a bummer. So you're, you're on Gonzaga's side of the bracket. You're hoping that Santa Clara can beat Portland tomorrow and that San Francisco, you know, is the four. It, listen – uh, was it was it Shabazz last night? I think broke his nose. Yes. So, may, maybe he plays right tomorrow. But what if San Francisco lost tomorrow, and uh, BYU was the four? Like this could happen. Uh, we'll see what happens. Then BYU would just show up on Saturday and play San Fran, who plays Friday, and then you go from there. We'll see. You just want San Fran. It doesn't matter how. You just need it to happen next Saturday. So here's what's interesting. Let's say San Francisco loses tomorrow, and that's not a gimme at San Diego. It's an interesting game without Shabazz, How one hard of their do you best players. Slam into a slim gym, you know? Okay. Then, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh-huh. If San Francisco 
lays an egg in that Friday game. That'd be, that'd be bad. That'd be the worst case that'd scenario for BYU. BYU needs a game against San yes. Francisco. Yes, they do. Doesn't matter the seed. Has just to have get it. to Saturday and have the game against San Francisco, which goes back to the point that I made even before the St. Mary's game, that BYU's chances, while they would have been dramatically increased in making the tournament by winning in Moraga, it's not an ultimate end-all, be-all, having lost to the Gales. It they, might be in the end, though. They can, in what looks like will be a bracket-buster type game, if it comes to this, have a chance to make the tournament with a statement win of sorts, quad one, neutral side, a lot of people watching, two top 50 teams in net, maybe battle for a quote-unquote de think... facto spot in the tournament yeah. as an at-large. We'll see how many people are watching a WCC quarterfinal on a Saturday where you have, like, regular season well, games. Well, I mean, the, the, important, country, the but... important selection committee people will certainly be watching. They'll be watching regardless. They have to. Um, I think we're talking about the nation, right? Um, yeah, I... Yeah. It, I, I, in the end, if BYU doesn't get in and they beat San Francisco, then the San Franci- then St. Mary's loss will have been the undoing, Right. Um, down the stretch. So we hope that it isn't. It, will the St. Mary's loss be the undoing or no, no, the no, four-game losing streak As you be mentioned, the like, it won't be the thing. They didn't have to win that game. It's like, well, then they will have had to. Um, hopefully, BYU can match up with San Francisco, win, and get in. But even if you match up with San Francisco and win, it does not mean BYU is going to get in. It, it will just be like, okay, we feel like we're on the right side of the finish of the regular or of the season to get maybe in. Obviously, the Pacific loss is the thing that undoes you. The Santa Clara loss before that kind of gets you to Pacific. So, yeah, I, I hope that we don't look back and go, shoot, BYU had to win in Moraga, and they didn't. If BYU gets San Francisco and wins that game, I just do not see how the committee can say, hmm, well, BYU head-to-head with San Francisco, a couple of teams that are both on the bubble, the Cougars won two of three, BYU won five of six, including that game before they lost to Gonzaga, who John Rostin of CBS Sports last night said, playing Gonzaga in the quarter or the semifinals of the West Coast Conference Tournament is death by execution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, by beheading. <laughs> Very quick. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's 40 minutes. For you. Right. Dang it. So, uh, again. Your assumption is that it comes down to those yes, two. Yes, I, really um, I really feel strongly that the West Coast Conference will get three teams in the tournament. The, so, as explained by Tom to us, the committee is not looking at bids by tourney, uh, you know, that specifically. You look at every individual team, and then it kind of shovels out, right? So, it San Francisco could be one of the teams in the discussion, certainly, but they're not, like, the only team when it comes down to BYU getting in or not, right? If you beat them they're, two or three times and beat them late in the tournament. That only comes in if those are the two teams you're talking about for, like, a spot. I understand. But I think they will be talking about those two teams for a spot. There, because I, I think the West Coast Conference is going to have three teams. There will be, like, eight to 12 teams probably discussed for the— I know that it's a bigger picture. I understand that I didn't well. Feel I understand like that your point. A moment ago. But what I am saying is I, the WCC is going to get three teams in. I am willing to wager, which I don't condone, a large amount, a large amount of money on or that. Or just condone it, whatever. That that will happen, okay? And it's going to be either San Francisco or BYU, depending on what happens in the WCC tournament. Yeah. San Fran's in. They have to do something to get out. Lose to BYU two or three times. But it, but it, well, that's one thing. Like, they, they may still be good enough to get in. Who knows? It'd be great if they got three. BYU would get money for San Francisco being in there. Our question Everyone would in the WCC. of the day. Do you care where BYU is seated in the West Coast Conference Tournament? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Jeremy Verhoff answers on Facebook. On the opposite side of the bracket from Gonzaga. It ain't happening. Then no. you want BYU to be the sixth seed, which... If BYU is the sixth, they are not going to the NCAA Tournament. Period. No, because they would have no. to lose to Pepperdine to yes. be the sixth seed. Yes, it's it's and then not... they would be on the opposite side. Great. Yes. Oh, if be, but... if <laughs> that would be the cost. It's like, no, then you're going all in on trying to win the tourney. That ain't happening. Then BYU's got to beat San Diego in a Friday game, and then you gotta beat <laughs> Santa Clara or St. Mary's or Bull. Yeah. Like Chant, listen, chances are BYU's not going to the NCAA tournament. We're hoping they somehow schedule some game next week and or get San Francisco. Like, 
just the chance of lining up the games just to be played, let alone actually executing and winning, is going to be tough. Well, define chances. Yeah. You say chances are they're not going. If they play San Francisco, Shabazz is not playing, yet the resume even, remains for San Francisco. Even if you win that game. You still think chances does, are not in favor of BYU going. You're on the bubble. Like, it's it's flip. I don't know. Flip a coin. I'm See, not defining that, what the right. That's, is. that's obviously where we disagree. Is like, like, you beat San Francisco, you say chances are still not in BYU's favor. I don't know what they are because it feel, I don't know what that game's going to mean eight days later. Like, mm. everyone, <laughs> the committee will be like, oh, yeah, that game happened eight days ago. But what about these games that happened earlier today and yesterday in the ACC and the Big Ten? and the da, 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 da. Like, the opportunity to really spike at the end is not there for BYU. That may hurt them. Even with the win of San Francisco, the spike. Eight days before, bro. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking timeliness of win, too. Wow. See, and, if, if, if the committee's your lost, if the committee's is lost. Gonzaga, the loss. It's not San Francisco. It's Who's going to be blamed for losing to Gonzaga? Anybody? No, but you didn't. Like, you went boom and then boom. Because you play Gonzaga two days later, and then does, if BYU loses by 20-plus. They could have a moral victory and lose by 15, and it would be considered like a win. This team, as currently constituted, ain't losing by only 15 okay. to Gonzaga. All right. And neither is St. Mary's. Like, St. Mary's getting blown out, too. At Daddy 47 on Twitter, just want to match up against USF yeah. slash St. Mary's before the Gonzaga game is out. The St. Saint Mary's, Mary's is not going to happen. happen. That's it's, not going to happen. It's not. Hashtag BYUS on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up. It's BYU climbing in the metrics to at least make it interesting going into Vegas. And Caleb Lohner, you may have noticed, been on fire as of late. Double-double last night, second in his career. He's going to warm up Studio B next. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. of business. This is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. The race is on. Go! Four teams powered by faith and driven to find family. With only their teammate, paper maps, and inspiration to guide them. Where are you? The contestants race for the ultimate prize. I am one step closer to knowing who my father is. The chance to meet their blood relatives and discover more about who they are. Relative Race, driving families together. Watch Season 9 on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Conference play begins, or should I say federation play for the BYU Cougars, number 13, Brigham, hosting number 9, Grand Canyon. Tonight, 9 Eastern on BYU TV, and the app tomorrow night as well, same time. Same time. Fresh start. Let's hope BYU approaches it that way mentally. They have gone through their licks, that is for sure. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. We welcome you back with our BYU men's basketball resume update. How much did BYU really improve their metrics after a win over LMU? Well, it did improve some. BYU up two spots in the net rankings 
from 51 to 49. Hey, you're a top 50 team in the net again. Ken Palm, five spot jump, probably because BYU was super efficient on offense and defense. They're at 48. Still the third team out in bracketology. And team rankings giving BYU a whopping 5.3% chance to make the tournament. Now consider BYU is the first team out in John Rothstein's bracket of CBS Sports and also the first team out in the athletic bracket. Are we ignoring the one where BYU's in? Jerry Palm is BYU in, baby. Jerry Palm has BYU <laughs> in. 11 seed. Which is interesting. Because Avoiding a play-in game, too. Typically, the years that Mine. BYU is in the tournament or out of the tournament, according to Jerry Palm, they get in. He's just, he's just the opposite of whatever, <laughs> whatever Lenardi so is. So maybe BYU will be out <laughs> in Jerry Palm's bracket going into selection Sunday, and it'll be a good omen. Well, Palm has BYU avoiding a first four as well. <laughs> like, BYU's like five plus in. Well, to him. I mean, he's respecting the fact that BYU has seven combined quad one and quad two wins. That's I realize this. When you don't have enough quad one, you talk about quad two. Well, they've got three. What, that, that's what I think. They've got three. Yes. So, I mean, let's... M- meaning they don't have enough. You well, probably need to feel mo- a little more comfortable with four plus maybe. To, that, now, here, here's what let's hope. Look. Oregon last night beat UCLA. Johnny Juzang got hurt. Oregon's up to 58. If Oregon can be top 50, make a little run in the Pac-12 tourney here coming up. That'd be really nice. San Diego State's at 31. They're just out from being well, a quad. This one. is interesting. Does that matter? So, because San Diego State and Oregon are both on the bubble. So what do you want? Like those teams? Yeah. Can do you want them BYU. to get out of the way, or do you want to help your resume? It, yeah, probably for them to get out of the way. Exactly. Me, it's like but, we got to lose games now. Oregon and San Diego yes. State got to lose now. So then you lose some quad twos. I honestly, or quad ones. They're you, they they're not stay, quad they, ones right now. They probably so stay quad good. two. Whatever. They'd probably stay quad two. Right. Yeah, Oregon could slide 40 spots and still be quad one. Oregon State could slide, uh, excuse me, San Diego State could slide 33 spots, still quad two. Here's my biggest So beat. now we're like, okay, San Diego State needs, okay, they need to lose and get out of the way because they're in a bubble situation. Here's my biggest beef. I look at a team, according to Joe Lenardi, like North Carolina. They're a team that, according to him, has a last four by. Okay, let's look at their resume. I mean, if we just saw blind resumes, and we'll do this in the coming weeks, trust me, because blind resumes are awesome. North Carolina, 41 in the net. They are 1-7 in, in quad one games. Yep. They have four quad two wins. So they have five combined quad one and quad two wins. They also have a quad four loss, just like BYU, mm-hmm. and no quad three losses. Okay? Why are they in, Joe? Why Joey are brackets? they in? And not even, not even one of the last four. They're one of the last four buys. Why is North Carolina – so much better positioned than a team like BYU. Because they have a similar record, but they play in the ACC? Question Probably. Mark? Yeah. Probably. They, they play in the and, ACC, but like... And they have... They have one quad one win. One. They, they have better stuff left. as well. Yeah, you're talking about as is. Yep. No, 100%. They have more opportunities coming down the stretch. At NC State, Syracuse, at Duke, and ACC tournament. You always got Pepperdine and Pacific... And San Francisco. Well, hopefully, that yeah, San Francisco helps. Hopefully. 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 The last four in right now, Loyola Chicago, San Fran, Indiana, and Memphis. So if you're looking for rootables, BYU fans, root for the four teams I just spoke of to lose upcoming games. And let's throw North Carolina into that mix as well. I just, I do not understand the whole North Carolina situation other than name brand and they're in the ACC because their resume. That's a powerful statement you just said. Is though. not as good as BYU's. Right. Yeah, ACC is down, obviously. And yeah. Yeah. You said a powerful uh, statement there, though. Yeah. They're North Carolina, man. San Diego State and SMU are the other two teams above BYU in the first four out. Dayton is below that. Oregon, with their win over UCLA, is the fifth team out. Yeah. So they're, they have to do some work to climb back in. So for me, like looking at San Diego State and Oregon, oh, whatever, hope they lose. Like, yeah. lose, get out lose, of the way, get out of the way. <sighs> it's going to come down to the wire regardless. Why do we have to lose to Pacific? There is a there is a scenario <laughs> if San Francisco if San Francisco loses to San Diego, yeah, yeah, tomorrow, which very well could happen. Again, if you're just joining us, one of their best players scores, Khalil Shabazz. He's been a BYU killer. Broke but, his nose last night. He is doubtful for tomorrow's game against San Diego. Let me. He won't sniff the game, I'll tell you that. Let me, t- mm. let me tell you this. I wonder if we feel the same way about San Francisco. Do you want them to slide out of the way, or do you want them to be 
how, be a meaningful win. I want them to beat San Diego tomorrow. They're 29. They probably can't climb out of top 50, right? Um, fall all, out of the top 50? Yeah. Sorry, fall out of the top 50. So probably want San Francisco to get out of the way too. Like – Ideally, San Francisco loses tomorrow. Oh, you want them to lose tomorrow. Well, let's talk through it. Like we were talking about uh, Oregon and San Diego State. If San Francisco loses tomorrow. They're uh, out. And then they're the five and they probably and they play, um, you know, BYU and BYU wins. They're a team out of the way and Correct. they're still top 50. But BYU Because they're 29. Climb. They're not going to fall 21 spots. No, uh, 22 spots. Nope. This is the ideal scenario for BYU, I think. If San Francisco loses yes. to San Diego tomorrow. Yes. Look out. So here's the thing. Even bah. if they win, I feel like they just maintain. They're one of the last four in. And BYU wins. Maybe BYU climbs to second team out. If there are like three or four spots in between San Francisco and BYU, I'm looking at that and going, okay, BYU just beat them head to head. Now, now three. It, Bink. Let's switch them places then. Yes, now it's like that. So, okay, so we've determined through discussion and information that San Francisco needs to lose tomorrow. And then BYU hopefully will be the four. And beat said Don's on Saturday it, next week. Yes. I and mean, then and then knock San Francisco out and hopefully BYU can climb up. Yes. And then if, play if San Francisco uh, does within win, twenty of Gonzaga. Yeah. And then hope for the best. That we've come to that. If San That's Francisco does yeah. win tomorrow, yeah. like again, I don't think it's like, oh no. BYU just, it, they BYU won't just, climb off a win exactly. in San Diego. They yes. will not climb. But they if they lose, the same. that's then, a bad loss. Then they're kind of out of the way. Yes, then it's a bad loss because San Diego doth stinketh. 210. That's a quad four in almost every scenario. All right. right. North Carolina. Is it San Francisco at San Diego? Yes. It okay, so it's at, a quad three. It is at San Diego. Quad three is still bad, yeah, if you lose it. North Carolina, Loyola, Chicago, <laughs> Indiana, Memphis, San Diego State, SMU. Those are your teams to root against, BYU fans. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jerry Palms is like, nah, you're in. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hey, maybe, again, I'm, maybe I like BYU it. Like, I like it. takes advantage of some teams above them losing over the weekend, and they take care of business against Pepperdine, and they, who knows? And the opposite can happen, too. That's the scary thing about this time is you really have to be clear of the first four or even you have to be into the bias to even feel real comfortable, honestly, because there are teams that are going to come flying in that BYU is like, BYU is going side uh, slow on the far right of the freeway and being like, no, we're in the mix. Like we're almost to our destination. Then there'll be these other teams that just get these good wins that may fly up the left of you up the freeway. That's (laughs) the scary part. Like in the end of the regular season in the conference tournament, obviously they can slow down as well. Sure. In this analogy. Sure. But it, it's not a comfortable place to be in to be like, hey, hopefully we get San Fran and hopefully we win. And then maybe that's enough. It's like, ah, chance. I'm t- I feel like chances are is that one, you need those scenarios to play out. Yeah. And two, you need to win. Yeah. And it's just that's a big ask. Talk it's to me tough. about Michigan, too. They're 15 and 11. I want to punch somebody thinking about this. They're scenario. 15 and 11. Hey, OK. But they play in the Big Ten. They're in the Big Ten, yep. right, which has been long touted this season as next to the Big 12, the second toughest conference. It's what the is, Big 12 and the Big Ten. But what does Jerry Palm have to say, Spencer? 12 seed in. In, okay. <laughs> 15 and 11. They have three quad one wins, three quad two. So they have six combined quad one yeah. and quad twos and yeah. 10 losses in those categories. And they have a quad three loss. Not a quad four, but a quad three. I look at Michigan, North Carolina, I'm like, I like do I, I think BYU could beat those teams on an individual court head to head right now. As currently constituted, even with no big men for BYU. All those in favor, please make it manifest. Let's go. Right? Yeah. Make a statement. You don't? You didn't manifest it? Oh, okay. I'm okay, thank you. That. Thank you. Sorry. How awkward is it in church, by the way, when you have to stand up there, everyone looks at you, and then you have to like uh vote for yourself on a calling? <laughs> <laughs> I did that on Sunday, I got a new calling. And I was like, eh, I vote yeah. for myself. What if I don't? I'm like, nah. Self confidence. No, no, I'm good. Self confidence. My, my, I don't have enough quad one spiritual wins to uh, have this calling. <laughs> <laughs> BYU's in. Cherry Palm. Quad one spiritual wins. Cherry Palm. They're, yeah, they're, you're good. We should get Jerry on. Let's talk. Coming up, play of the year with Cougar baseball so far. Ooh, it's pretty good too. Plus, as promised, Caleb Loner mm. off his second career double double will join us over Zoom to discuss what has changed for him recently. This is BYU Sports Nation. Dude, he was feisty last night. It was awesome. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school. 
but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary. And there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. I watch uh, BYG TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Tomorrow night, senior night for BYU Hoops. Listen as the Cougars host Pepperdine Marriott Center. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. A little earlier game with Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio and the app. Welcome back to the show. He is Jeremiah and Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get fabulous content throughout the day, follow us on all of the major social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Without further ado, we welcome in the man of the night. He put up his second career double-double. Caleb Lohner is with us on Zoom, joining a Friday edition of BYU Sports Nation. Caleb, great to have oh. you on the show. How are you feeling this morning? Feeling pretty good. Thanks for having me on. Hey, a double-double? My goodness. Now, let's be honest and clear. Like, you've been very public about this, too. You have not played as well as you would have liked to this season, but over the past few weeks – Feels like you're on the rise, my friend. So what has changed for you over the past couple of weeks to get back to the player that you thought and knew that you could be? Um, I think just to continue to trust myself and my team and my coaches. And I mean, I feel like with greatness comes adversity. And so just through this journey of basketball that I've been on and this team's been on, I think just a recommitment to myself, like, hey, look, you're here for a reason. You're here to help this team win games. You're here to do a lot of things really, really great. And so I think during the season, I kind of had to change and um, alter some of the things my mind was thinking about during the game. And again, I think right now, just as a team and individually, we're just all on the rise. Sometimes making shots, Caleb, isn't even skill based. It's just like it's your night or not. Sometimes it feels like. But what you have to do is like bring that juice, right? And it feels like last night you really brought it. Like you were playing with an intensity and a fire that maybe some games wasn't there. What was it about last night that uh, was special for you in that regard? Um, I just think I got myself going early in ways that had no involvement with scoring the ball. And I think there had been some times in the past where scoring the ball actually was help dependent on my intensity, which I think was the wrong mindset for me in certain times. And also right now, I think we're in a cool spot just as a team where every single game is really, really huge for us. I don't know if that's a great spot that we put ourselves in, but I personally love it. I love the grind of like, okay, every single game we play now is so important. And so I think just having that in my mind and knowing that, hey, I can really help this team in so many ways by bringing this certain intensity because of how important everything is. I think to me that's special. And so, yeah, I'm just going to keep playing and keep helping this team win. 
You shot 67%, 13 points, had 11 rebounds and a couple of assists last night, knocked down your only three-pointer, and you just pointed out that you have clearly embraced the pressure of the situation. How do you translate that over to your team? Or do you feel like your team is with you in that regard of embracing just how big and important and pressure-packed every game is at this point? I think my team's completely behind the same idea of actually enjoying and embracing the grind. Like there's been time, I said this last night in a few other media, but there's been times this year where, I mean, we've kind of been punched in the face. We've lost a few games in a row. Uh, we went through injuries. So we've kind of battled through it all. And I think everyone's right now is just kind of like embracing the grind and enjoying like, Hey, this is it. Like we can't, play around like let's just go have fun let's do what we do and we've worked so hard like every single game and i think enjoying this process for us right now is really important so second career double double for you and what was cool was when you had nine rebounds and you got your 10th the crowd acknowledged that they knew did you hear that on the court i heard it a little bit but i didn't know that was for my 10th rebound <laughs> i had no idea honestly they typically don't cheer random rebounds that hard um but yeah they yeah. they celebrated it with you um and that was a cool moment and then even when you subbed out uh your first time you know like six minutes into the game or whatever the crowd gave you a, a nice ovation there they acknowledged that was that affirming to you yeah that was nice um again these BYU fans are the greatest ever and I don't know, it's nice to see that little love, little love doesn't hurt, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're here for it. Caleb Lohner is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You got to take care of Pepperdine. That's the regular season finale, a senior night. We'll ask you about that in a moment, about some of your senior teammates. But tomorrow we'll figure out where exactly BYU is going to wind up with the seeding approaching the West Coast Conference Tournament. Caleb, are you of the opinion that, hey, I want to play more basketball. If we're the five seed, great. I get to play Friday and then Saturday, and I, I want that. Or would you rather be going into playing the first game on Saturday in the quarterfinal? Um, I honestly don't even want to think about that. But personally, I think – the less games we can play in that tournament is probably better for us just because of the grind we've kind of been on. Um, and I mean, the less games we play, I think naturally the easier it is to win something like this, but for us, I don't think we're worried about that right now. We're just going to go take care of business on Saturday, continue to play the way we're playing and let everything else pan out. So senior night tomorrow night will be emotional because you've got Alex, obviously and Tijon and company Richard and, and Gavin will be honored as well. What's that going to be like for you? Um, I think it'll be kind of tough, man. Like I've developed a special spot in my heart, like anyone would for some of these guys. And they just mean so much to this program and so much to me, just kind of me looking up to them as leaders and um, like brothers in a sense, Alex, Tijon. I know Richard and Gavin haven't been able to be with us for quite a while, but I think all those dudes have had an impact on me that'll last forever. And so I'm just grateful to be a part of it. And I'm grateful that I was been able to play with them for the last few years and, and cherish that forever. Alex wish them the best on their career. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Alex Barcelo, I mean, you've played a lot of basketball with this guy and yeah. uh, you've been with him for the majority of his journey at BYU. So when you look at him as a player, what do you think the legacy is that Alex Barcelo leaves with BYU basketball? I think he leaves a legacy of just a, a tough basketball player who can do everything. He gets everything done. He's willing to put himself um, like in front of his team and be a leader and change the game in ways that a lot of players can't change the game. And I just think Alex Barcelo is a basketball player and just as a human being is like an incredible dude. He's taught me so much, like kind of being able to be a little younger than him and him kind of take me under his wing in certain times and, helping me through things. And I hope I was able to do the same for him, but I don't know. It's, it's going to be sad not playing with him for years to come. But again, man, I know him. He's going to kill it after this, like just with the fire and will he has to be great. Um, yeah. Alex Barcelo will be missed on this floor. Thank you, Arizona for not playing Alex. Barcelo. Thank you, Arizona. <laughs> um, you guys. Yeah, suck. seriously. Yeah, they're doing just fine, I think. But, yeah, we uh, oh, we, have, we have benefited so much. It's been amazing. Okay, you have amazing yeah. hair. But what if tomorrow you came out with the Alex Barcelo haircut? 
Um, <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> you know, I'm always down for something crazy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that would be gnarly, um, right? Yeah. <laughs> maybe there's a say, maybe there's a combo. Noticed, but I put a little bit more color in my hair. Yep. I could I could just have them shave the sides. Yes. And, <laughs> Yep. With that speed line like Alex has got going. <laughs> Dude, what's fun is if you look super closely, there like when there's a little bit of friction in the air, there's little flames that go. It like actually burns it out a little wider. It's crazy when he speeds up. It's oh, all, it's, I know. It's insane. Oh, good it's stuff. And that's magic. A barber can't do that. It's <laughs> a barber cannot do that. Every every time he comes in with a new haircut, I like have to admire it. I'm like, that is the cleanest line I've ever seen in my life. We are all Alex admirers. Alex Marcello in the fade is something I'll miss, we for sure. We are all admirers. <laughs> Caleb, it's great to talk with you. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma so you can keep things rolling against Pepperdine tomorrow night and send those seniors off with a big win. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. You got it. The man, Caleb Lohner, fresh off his second career double-double. Yesterday, like I was like, is he going to fight 24? I, like, I freaking loved the juice that Caleb brought last night. It was like, I think where he is going to be more in the future is what he said is I don't need to make shots to be engaged. Like I need to be like that, which was awesome. And then if you make shots, great. But what he needs to do is rebound and defend. And guess what? The offense will show up. And last night, the strategy was get the ball inside Foose and Caleb early, right? Early, early. Um, I should mention Gideon George is also a senior. Technically he has he's a decision opting to, come to back. make. Oh, has he already said yeah, that? He's oh, I didn't know that. That's okay. the plan. Okay. That's great. That's great. More Gideon. Yes. More shoes. <laughs> BYU can Let's use go. it. BYU can use his veteran leadership after losing the likes of Alex Barcelo and T. John Lucas. That's good to know because I know early in the season he was still deciding. Good to know. Okay, right. coming up, Double Down Picks, regular season finale edition. And we'll ask this question. You can ponder it over the break. Is BYU the overall champion of the Conference of Champions over this athletic year? This and is BYU Sports Nation. Fresh Bracketology. Ooh, just came out. Hey, San Fran sliding. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. Andy is new this season. Yeah, she's awesome. Very capable and very big hearted. It's so amazing to be a part of this. I mean, to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways. Yeah, we like to tease her. You know, it's natural, though, being the new girl and all. Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, that's for sure. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Please remove this ball from this vicinity, said Atiki Ali Atiki. Join us for the West Coast Conference Tournament coming up next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday. We got you covered from the Orleans in Las Vegas. And before we get to a loaded edition of a Friday BYU Sports Nation Cougar Whip Around, this just in from BYU Football. They have made one, two, three, four, five additions to their football staff, Jerem. We talked a long time about this. 
the need to increase just overall staff and production to compete with the Power 5 transition. Yeah. It would appear that some of this is now happening. I'm not sure if these are just the new replacements at pre-existing positions or if they're additions. But because it's Gavin Fowler is a defensive analyst. So wait, wasn't he on the staff? He was a grad assistant, so this is different. That feels like it's an additional spot, right? An additional well, have, job created? Well, they have defensive analysts. I just don't know if it's like, we had one, now we have two. Okay. I don't know. Uh, offensive analysts, Tyson McDaniel, Matt Mitchell, and then two assistant strength and conditioning coaches, Spencer Reed and Dalton Elliott. Spencer Reed is the son of Andy Reed. So uh, good to have Spencer on campus. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go. Yeah. Okay. As promised, time to whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marist, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. Kansas State rivals writer Grant Flanders says Bruce Weber feels like an extra game next week would be cutting into the schedule a little bit more than he would like. What's the chance Cougars get an extra game next week? I think it's low. I, I think that there are just too many moving parts. I think there is too much trepidation from other teams that are on the bubble. Even though BYU apparently is willing to go on the road and play pretty much wherever. Yeah. I just this tells me that BYU is not going to play Kansas State. And you know what? As long as BYU gets San Francisco, fine, whatever. I would love this game. I think it helped BYU's resume. But uh, BYU is probably a quad two to most people at home because they're 50 or 49 or whatever. So it doesn't make a ton of sense. It's more of a scheduling issue because BYU's tourney is very early. And a lot of these other teams that BYU would try and want to get, they're still playing their regular season at the end of next week. Yeah. So it doesn't make a ton of sense for other teams. I would love to see it, though. I think it helped BYU. Well, If they got another win and another win, let's go. If BYU has to play on Friday... Now you're talking about playing a game on Tuesday and then going to the WCC tournament and playing on Friday and Saturday and then having to turn around if you win that game and play on Monday. That's a lot. I counted it up that if BYU did have this extra game and played Friday, Saturday, Monday, that with this week, they would play like 6 and 11 days. That's wild. That's too much. Too much. Yeah. Especially Caleb just told us like the fewer, the games, fewer games, the, the better. better. Yes. He doesn't want the run up to Saturday. Jaron, BYU women's basketball scored over the century mark for a third time this season. Methinks they're a little bugged by the lack of rankings and seeding respect from the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. But I ask you this. What is the most impressive 100-point game BYU has put forth this season? 101 against Utah State, 104 against Pepperdine in a 51-point win, or the 37-point win over Santa Clara? Yes, correct. <laughs> All of them, man. They're amazing, dude. I'll give the A nod. Hundy? I'll give the nod to Santa Clara just because it was on the road. The other two games were at home. It's tough to go 100 plus not in your own gym. Yeah, it's not that hard when you're playing Santa Clara. More <laughs> impressive. The sliding catch by Colin Reuter, the catcher, mm -hmm. or the win against Arizona State. Ooh. Well, if you haven't seen the catch, it's pretty tough to beat this individual effort. Show it to you. I mean, Colin Reuter, if you don't know him, you should, BYU baseball fans. This Here dude is. is legit. Watch this individualized effort. He's falling back towards his own dugout, makes the catch, and then slides into the BYU dugout as his teammates <laughs> celebrate around him. Uh, That's awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, at the time, BYU was losing the game. Maybe that changed the momentum. So I'm going to say I'm going to go with the catch, and I'm going to say that changed the momentum of the game and allowed BYU to win 4-2. to two. Mm, Great catch. I'll go with the win because it's, it's still 2-2 two, two in the ninth. That was pretty early in the game. But Hayden Latham leads off with a double. You get things going, then you close it out on the road against Arizona State. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Barry BYU's, Bonds ain't walking through that door for ASU. BYU's beating Ohio State and Arizona State back-to-back. Pretty That's good. pretty good. And if Barry Bonds walking through that door, he's not as skinny as he used to be. Jerem, that Multiple win, jokes there. That win over Arizona State also brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports <laughs> Nation stat of the day. BYU as an athletic department is a combined 15, 2, and 1 against the entire Pac-12 conference across all sports since August. Women's tennis. Head-to-head -head competition. Yeah, women's tennis uh, has the two losses. Mm -hmm. They do have a win over Baylor, though, which is nice. Okay. Right. So Soccer tied Utah. Soccer tied Utah. That's one of the lower, like, games of the year, you know, performances. But, hey, maybe they needed that in the Utah State games to <laughs> go to the national championship game. Who knows? Okay. Pretty good, man. Are we going to hang a banner for this, too? Maybe. <laughs> How would you best describe the BYU Pac-12 relationship over the last athletic calendar year? Sheer dominance. It's been really fun. De facto Pac-12 champions, right? 
the, it continues. We're staying another banner. I'm telling Roll you. it down. Bring it's back fun. the same banner. It's who has that, by the way. Where'd that? Yeah, Ben, where'd that go? Do you have that? <laughs> Can we have it? Where do you rank the Cosmo Surf Dunk and the Cosmo Stunt Pantheon from last night? This is pretty cool. Um, man, this is this is up there. But it, to me, number one is still the human pyramid from the three-point line oh. where he falls yes. and then dunks. That will be hard to beat, bro. That will be hard the to hu- beat. The human pyramid dunk where he falls the from th- the three-point line. It's a three-point dunk. It's wild. Fence. Yeah, that's number one to me still. Yes, yes. So this I love top five. Great. He's done some fantastic stunt oh, dunks. I don't no offense to Cosmo. I don't even know if it's top five. Honestly, that's a Thursday night for Cosmo. <laughs> like the balance, the goggles, like you said. Cosmo's amazing. I was telling the truck, I was like, hey, watch this. Something crazy is going to happen. And so they showed it live. I th- they probably were regardless. It's not because I asked them, but I was like, hey, just in case. Just, just in case. It was worth having the cameras on him. Always. Cosmo's literally the best. Like, BYU has amazing things. Like, the most uh, consistent, amazing thing at BYU to me is Cosmo. Like, like the, performance. He is the elite He's pinnacle. He's n- never... Never below amazing, right? <laughs> never. That's, I love you, that's Cosmo. Some serious praise. Holy cow. I love you, Cosmo. All right. Like let's... platonically and romantically. I love Cosmo. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Coming up, how'd we do in double down picks last time? And a rise and shout out to a guy who, frankly, can overcome anything. This is BYU Sports Nation. One more look at the door. More dunk. Cosmo, baby. The best. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Hey family, if you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in nonstop entry, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. You two are bombing. Buddy, come on. Help me out here. We got it. You know we got it. Come on. Ah! <laughs> I'm undercover as a cat. Yeah, I'm very good at assuming other identities. No, 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 no. I'm in too deep. I need to catch that laser dot. <laughs> this portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Station, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or you can download the podcast, Google BYU Sports Nation, on uh, your Netscape browser, and subscribe, rate, and review. It's time for our Double Down Picks. We'll recap the Thursday night fun against LMU and give you our picks for the Pepperdine Senior Night Finale. Jeremy, lead us off. BYU wins by single digits. Mm. Nope, one by 20. Uh, number two, Nell, George, Johnson combined for 33-plus in points, rebounds, and assists. They average 31.9. Bodie Foe. Big night. Alex Barcelo Big night. did not score a ton, and uh, his guys stepped up for him. God. Blaine Fowler's picks. Uh, he said the bigs are going to have a big night. Boost gets a double-double. That didn't happen. Loner gets into double figures. That did happen. He went double-barreled on that. Well, triple. He, the unquantifiable bigs have a big night. 
But then he quantified it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then he said, okay. number two, BYU would hold LMU to under 42% shooting from the field. That happened. Blaine, one for two. There you go. All right, number one for me. BYU will hold LMU to 66 or fewer points. They averaged 70, scored 82 against BYU in the first matchup. Hey. Hey. They did it. They played some defense last night. And then I said, Atiki Ali Atiki will score four or more points. He averages two. He had six. A couple of dunks. Some beautiful plays. His uh, slip screen throwdown. Gorgeous. And that block we showed on a uh, what's called a billboard earlier in the program. Oh, my goodness. All right. A rare two for two night for me. Pulls me within 13 points of Jerem, who leads 38-25. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> now for the Pepperdine picks. Number one, Alex Barcella will lead all scores by at least five points. Ooh. In the game. Everybody. Okay. Okay, so not just BYU. Everybody. Everybody in the game by yes. five plus. And all two, right. BYU wins by 14 plus. Thank you Remember for not going week? 17 plus. Well, I think it's going to be a 16 point margin. Exactly. Okay. So okay. I'm going 14. Plus. I'm just saying thank you for going 17 plus because if you say 17 plus, it'll be a single digit game. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove the curse isn't there. Hey, you, you, you do your thing. Uh, I think Pepperdine's better than LMU. <laughs> okay. I'm doubling down on the BYU defense at home. Okay. Okay. BYU will hold the same thing as last game. BYU will hold Pepperdine to 66 points or fewer. The Wave scored 85 against BYU. I know. They aren't shooting 50%. 85! 66 is tough. That's pretty good. That's, no, that's good. So I'm going to go 66 or fewer. And then I'm I'm in on the Caleb Loner train, bro. Who is it? Double figures scoring again. He's averaging about seven a game. I need him. I, BYU needs him to have a big game for confidence going into the West Coast Conference Tournament. Let's go, baby. Okay, the question of the day. Do you all care where BYU is seated in the West Coast Conference Tournament? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at Jared underscore Buckeye underscore call answers on Instagram. Fun middle name. No, because this team needs to make it to the championship game either way to have a chance. They have to get through Gonzaga? People. If BYU beats Gonzaga in the semis, they are in, baby. 100%. You're going to have to beat a great team or two either way. Well, no. couldn't they beat San Francisco? San Francisco's not a great team. They're very good. They're not great. Okay. Come on. If you're on the bubble, you're not a great team. Come on. Today's I, rise. I wouldn't even say St. Wow. Mary's is great. Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Happy birthday to two goats at BYU. Jimmer Fredette yes. and Michaela Kulin. How about that? You know who told me that it's Jimmer's birthday? Marco Polo did. So there you go. Happy birthday to Jimmer. It's a friendly Marco Polo. Although one time I, uh, you know, Called someone and said, happy birthday, and it wasn't their birthday. They listened to the wrong one one time on that. Uh, also, we need to give a shout-out to former BYU basketball legendary head coach Dave Rose, who has battled and battled and battled cancer. He was in the crowd last night. It was awesome. He got emotional when he was recognized. Yes. Fantastic stuff. Good to see him. To see coach it was right Rose here. Back yep. Oh, that so moment. great. That moment. Love Cheryl, too. Love all of the Rose family. And it hit him right there, you can tell. Mm. But thanks to today's guest, Caleb Lohner. Sorry to Dennis. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Nick Sanderson. We'll see you for volleyball tonight, 9 Eastern. Go Cougs.